I know. Straight to jail. Funding for this video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Are y'all okay? And welcome to video. This week, we're going to be embarking on yet another 24-hour reading challenge. But with a twist! Normally, how I do these challenges, I just mood read my way through the 24 hours of reading, see how much I can read, and that's how it goes. Today, we have a very specific goal in mind. <laughs> and also, if you're new here, hello, my name is Allie. And personally, I'm too narrow spicy to not follow my bedtime routine, so we do 24-hour reading challenges a little bit different around here. So instead of just one day, one 24-hour window, we see how much we can read, I literally time every minute that I spend reading across a few days so then we can see how much we can actually read in a literal 24 hours of just reading. Does that make sense? We've got some pretty hefty books to get through. That's right. In today's video, we are going to attempt to read The Priory of the Orange Tree and its prequel, A Day of Fall and Night. Hi, Rumi. Within just 24 hours of reading. Can I help you? You need attention. Please hold. Like, he's just always in his own world. He really quiet for real, unless he know you. He's funny as hell, though. There you go. You good? Anyway, I've had the Priority of the Orange Tree on my bookshelf, specifically on my TBR shelf, for like a year, but I've just been so intimidated by its size. However, I have seen some conspiracy theories that each page actually doesn't have that many words and that it was published this way, so then people would take it as a challenge or something. I don't know how true that is, but it does make me feel more confident that I can do this. I'm also a little bit intimidated because I'm not the biggest fantasy reader, not because I don't like them. It's just a genre that I don't typically gravitate towards. However, I did love the Poppy War trilogy and devoured it in no time at all. So, I believe it myself. I I can do this, right? Right? So like I said, I've been putting it off. I'm more of a cozy fantasy reader. I'm not a big action girly. But recently, very recently, the prequel, A Day of Fallen Night, has been released. And so you know what? Choo choo bunch. I bought my ticket for the bandwagon and I'm ready to get hyped and join everyone in loving these books. This series is so popular and so beloved online. They're both adult high fantasies that show us what unfolds when an enemy awakens near a queendom with no heir. There's assassins, there's lesbian love, there's dragons. In other words, what's not to adore? Now, Let's break it down. Let's do some math. The Priory of the Orange Tree is 104 pages, and her prequel, A Day of Fallen Night, is 846 pages. So, according to my calculations, that's an even 1,650 pages. Which means, if we're going to try and read this in 24 hours of reading, over a span of a week, we'll have to consume approximately 235 pages per day to stay on track, slash 68.75 pages an hour to stay on track. Now, my typical reading speed is about 100 pages per hour. However, what makes me scared is that I struggle with this genre mostly because I'm not that great at keeping up with all the names, all the alliances, all the rules of the world and where everything is and the magic system, all that jazz. It's a big struggle for me. We're gonna have to try and stay on top of it all, which will most likely slow us down. However, I'm going to believe my fellow bookish friends in this beautiful bookish community because I literally don't know a single person that doesn't like these books. And since everyone else loves them, I will love them too, right? Right? <laughs> so it's day one. Let's get started with The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Whoo! <laughs> Okay, I read the first chunk, not the first chapter. Immediate first impressions? Um, it's giving that TikTok audio. You know what I mean? The Yellow Hall Blood Bone Oath Emperor began his reign in 667 before her time, at the conjunction of the nightly spheres, when all of the It's been ages since we left period mm -hmm. Some new terms. Choosing day, stories of old, red sickness. Um, our protagonist question mark is supposed to be in seclusion, and the fact that she broke said seclusion is bad. She has already met a water ghost. We are going to believe that our brains can comprehend this. We're gonna believe. Literally, all I read since our last update is this little piece and this three quarters of a page. And we've already been introduced to another like 10 vocab words. Thank 
Okay, day two. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, so yesterday I was questioning my whole life because I am dedicating the following week to reading these two giant books that everyone says are so good. And so I assumed that the second you opened that book up, you were in for a wild ride. You would be hooked from the get-go. You would care so much. You'd be so fun. Unless you like being spoken at in a different language and having to continuously flip back to the glossary to figure out what the heck is being said, then, oh, this is the perfect book for you. <laughs> Remember how I said I can typically read 100 pages in an hour? It took an hour to read 30 yesterday and a lot of people they're trying to encourage me They're saying you know, oh, you're just savoring a new world. You know, it takes more time I'm not savoring this world. I'm losing my spot because three to eight times per sentence I have to go to the glossary and figure out what's being said. This is all telling nothing is being shown to me They let me know that Susa would do anything for Tane just as Tane would do anything for her Show me show me the friendship. Don't just tell me that we meet Tane's arch nemesis And they just say and then Tane saw her arch nemesis this guy show me show me why I shouldn't like this guy. Give me moments that I can remember that I can pin in my brain so that I can actually know who these people are. It's all just info dumping. I'm struggling. I reached out to a friend. She said that it's very crucial to have a bookmark on the person's glossary and then the vocab glossary so it's easier to flip back and forth. That has helped a little bit. That same friend informed me that it will get better after 100 pages and then she said it's actually 150 pages. Then I reached out to another friend. She said 200 pages. Do you mean Stockholm Syndrome? That's what I'm getting from this. That by the time you hit the 200 page mark, you have been imprisoned within the confines of these pages that you start to enjoy your time. That's my current theory. So anyway, day one, we read for a little over an hour and 20 minutes. And in that hour and 20 minutes, we read 51 pages. Do I believe it will get better though? Hopefully a little bit. I read The Six of Crows duology and I thought that the first book was okay. And then the second book slapped. So I'm kind of holding out hope that all this world building, even though we're not build, I'm sorry. No, we're not gonna call it that. This is not world building. This is world telling. But anyway, once the world telling is over, Hopefully I care. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. I know all of you love this book I genuinely don't know a single person who doesn't so it has to get better, right? Right Hello, hello, update time. So I've been reading for about another hour. I'm on page 102. There's some intrigue, I'll say that much. I'm definitely able to read a bit faster because I'm a little familiar with some of the stuff, fully accepting that I'm not gonna know all of the things because there's just too many things. But we've got some alliances that wanna be formed. Some dudes met a very scary dragon. We've got an assassin girl. I think she's my favorite. We're starting to get introduced to some of the religious conflicts, starting to dip our toes into some of the feminist themes. We're getting somewhere. We're finally getting some dialogue, which I think is most important. There was barely any dialogue in the first 50 pages. My brain was tired and my brain is still tired, but it's not as torturous as the first 50 pages were. I'm believing my friends that it will get better. It already has. Look at all of our tabs, exciting. I've got a little under an hour before I have to go to school. So let's just see how much we can read until then, shall we? Yes. Okay, let's just say day two is going way better than day one. <laughs> I've read for a little over an hour, one hour, 10 minutes. We've read about 70 pages. We're on page 123. And I think we're in a good spot because yesterday I chose to do Dutch homework instead of read this. Whereas today I would rather read this than go do Dutch. So we're getting somewhere. We don't hate it today. Woo! But for now I have to go learn my second language. Check back in when I'm home. A wee bit of a flare up. My shoulders and neck do not want to support my head and everything is tired, but it's not a migraine. So we are here in bed. I did my class. I took a nice shower. We're uncomfortable, but the day was a success. So we are currently on page 123, chapter 11. Let's see how much we can read before we fall asleep. Ready, go. I've been reading for a little over two and a half hours today. I still haven't even read 200 pages, but that's just because we had a really slow start. Okay, we're gonna catch up. It's gonna be fine. Chapter 15, page 175. Also, I'm not Googling how to pronounce any of these names because in my mind, these people are logged in my brain as man who came out of ocean <laughs> and is a young teenage heartthrob. Man who housed wet man from ocean. Assassin girl. Overly religious royal girl that I want to kiss the assassin girl. And 
so on and so forth. So extra credit points for even trying. <laughs> um, but I care about Enclase, Niclase, for whatever reason. Probably just because that was the first time I were introduced to, to be honest. And I definitely care about the whole dragon taming folks. I love that timeline. We barely get anything from that timeline. Hope we get more soon. My most favorite conflict, so to say, is this whole idea of the religions and the history and the stories. There was this tension between the religious royal lady who's getting married to a different guy. So then they she can make a baby and the dragons won't be so mad. I'm I'm paying attention. There was this moment when the princess queen girl was like, assassin girl, tell me a story. And she did. And it was about what the title of the book is. And the religious lady was like, that's not how the story is told. And the assassin girl was like, mm, I know the truth. And I just found out some stuff about the assassin girl. And so that's, the, that's what I care about the most. Which I think is the right thing to care about because it is literally the title of the book. So we're doing something right. Am I understanding what's happening? Kind of. A little bit. Because this is still just throwing so many names and places and information and alliances at me where I'm like, this is too much for one girl, but I'm enjoying what I am understanding. And that's where we're at. Uh, this has been an update. I think I might be getting sick. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Albus is using the cat box as loudly as he possibly can. I'm gonna keep reading now. Another day, another reading this. We are officially on page 237, chapter 22. I have to admit, I don't yet see the hype. It's okay. I don't, I don't. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be put in the stocks and y'all are gonna throw rotten fruit and veggies at me because I'm not terribly impressed. Of course, there's still like two books worth <laughs> of pages to hopefully connect, but I'm a little nervous because existing online is scary enough as it is and it's even scarier when you don't like something that everyone else likes. Friendly reminder that we all like different things and that's okay. We celebrate different different opinions here. To be honest, I love when people have different opinions. I love when people love different things. It's such a comfort to me to know that there's something out there for everybody and everything that's out there has a match with somebody. Like a bunch of little pieces fitting snugly in the puzzle of life, you know? So I don't hate it, but I'm not impressed. Like if I stopped reading it right now, I wouldn't be upset in the slightest. Like I don't dread picking it up, but I don't look forward to picking it up either. That's where I'm at. And I've passed the point that everyone told me to. Anyway, I woke up with some icky body feelings. My neck is weak and in a lot of pain. I think I need to stay home today, which is bad for my learning, but great for our reading. So that's what we're gonna do today is just stay in bed, rest our little bodies, and get a ton of reading done. Okay, great. Let's read. My heavens. <laughs> people. We are officially halfway done with the Priory of the Orange Tree. Whoa! We're on track, baby! A lot has unfolded since we talked last. Not only is a lot happening in the book, but a lot is happening with my body. I would pay money to escape my body right now, but luckily I don't have to because I have this book. I am no longer in the headspace where I don't want to finish it. I would like to finish it. I would like to see what unfolds. There's been a betrayal. There's been some deaths. There's been some kisses. hey -o. I think this book came to me at a great time, even though I've had it on my TBR shelf for a year. Opening it has come to me at the right time. Uh, I do not feel good, but luckily we're reading. <laughs> I have officially read for almost two hours, 20 minutes today, which makes it a little over six with the book. We keep at this pace. We'll finish the next half in six, meaning we will be half done with the challenge. On track, baby. It is my favorite character. That's all. Let's keep reading.
update time. I am on page 566. Today I have been reading for almost five hours and things are too good right now. I'm suspicious. I know that a lot of bad is about to happen because things are just too nice. And I don't know if I'm emotionally, spiritually, mentally prepared for that, but it's gonna happen regardless. So let's do it. Respectfully, what the flank? Are y'all okay? We can't even talk about it because that would be the biggest spoiler ever. But who slept with who and had whose babies? Repeat what you just said. And the person who had that baby, what are they actually? Um, so I'm in the kitchen now to make a cup of tea so I can cope better with what the flank I just learned. <laughs> I have less than 200 pages to go. We've been reading for a little over five hours. We're about halfway done through the challenge, time-wise and reading-wise. I have to finish it today. There's no other choice. The thing is, I still am gonna die on the hill that I don't think this is written that great. The pacing leaves a lot to be desired. Everything is really just told to you. It is very rare that you experience something and come to a conclusion on your own. These big, baffling, jaw-dropping moments are just monologued to you, which isn't my favorite, but maybe it is the Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know what it is, but I'm here for the ride regardless. Am I invested? Yes. Do I see myself screaming from the rooftops that this is the best book ever in the end? No. But am I so glad to have read it and to be able to text my friends the things that I'm learning along the way? Absolutely. Is it very exciting to be on the same page? As everyone else on the internet who has read this book? Yes. It does feel cool to be in the club. Let's go finish this. <laughs> when worlds collide. So basically I'm going to jail because it is definitely illegal to exist in the book internet space and say out loud to said book internet space that you thought the priority of the orange tree was just okay. This was just okay. Which is to me, of course, that's just my stupid little subjective opinion towards ink on paper, okay? My word is not law. I've already had some people messaging me saying, I was so excited to read this and now I don't think I'm gonna read it. You should still read it. If you wanted to read it, you should still read it. I'm just one person. Everyone else loves this book. Mathematically speaking, democratically speaking, my opinion doesn't matter here. <laughs> I just thought that it left a lot to be desired. I walked away feeling ultimately pretty underwhelmed. I thought it was pretty predictable. Aside from that one messed up, gross thing that that one character did. Who had whose baby? Okay. Really all I cared about was the gay couple. Is anyone surprised? Like it was fine. It was fine. For me. For me. The biggest reason why I didn't really connect with this one is that the entire thing is telling, not showing. And I don't read a book to be told a bunch of facts about a place. I read a book to experience the place. I did try my best. I was looking up fan art so then I could have a face to a name. I took extensive notes. I have all my little tabs to keep track of all the plot points and new characters. And I really gave it my all. And I just thought it was okay. I'm so sorry. Okay? However, I have heard from a lot of people who loved this book that they preferred A Day of Fall and Night, the prequel, even more. Let's go get it. Like, I can't take the pressure of it. But don't you think any job interview? She's even bigger than the last one. Approximately 40 pages more and also significantly taller. However, I think the words are bigger and there's all this extra space around the words. There's absolutely no reason it needs to be this big. They definitely could have made it the same size, but God can be unforgiving and cruel sometimes. However, the challenge continues. Let's start the timer and let's dive in. Day four, baby. Okay, I've read the prologue in about 17 minutes, so we're already off to a stronger start. With this one, it just took a while to get into the writing style to get into the info dumping, but at this point, I'm used to the info dumping. I'm a pro now, kind of. This was a lot easier to follow. I have higher hopes for this one, but we're only 17 minutes in, just about 27 pages in. Let us continue. <laughs> 
I cannot stress enough how much more readable this one is. I'm on page 50. We've read for a little over 30 minutes. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm feeling great. Yes! Chicken time. I've been reading for a little over an hour and this is how far we are. We've read almost 100 pages, so we are reading at our normal pace. This one is just written so differently from the other one. It's not all info dumping. I'm connecting with the characters. They're all talking to each other. Things are happening. Each chapter is ending on a little cliffhanger like it's supposed to be when you're jumping between all these different perspectives. The intrigue is there. I'm so excited <laughs> and so relieved. If we've read for an hour today, that means that we've read for 13 and a half hours in total, which means that we have 10 and a half hours left. However, if we keep up at this pace, we are going to be finishing with time to spare. stress enough how much I am preferring this one. I am so shocked at how different the two are. I'm on chapter 15, page 127. I made sure to stop the timer at one hour and 31 minutes because now we officially have exactly 10 hours left of this reading challenge. So instead of counting up, I'm gonna set the timer to 10 hours. We're gonna count down. It's the final moment. I completely believe in myself that I'll be able to finish this in 10 hours. We have like 700 pages left. We're having a good pace. I have barely had to use the Glossary. We have all of these great young ladies defying the odds, breaking traditions, and doing what they want to do. I'm gonna make some food now, and then we're gonna dive right back in for our final 10 hours of this challenge. Woo! Page 200 check-in. It is starting to slow down a little bit. There's about eight hours and 50 minutes left of the 24 hour challenge. I'm still homesick, which is why we're able to sit here and just read. A lot of people are saying, oh my God, you're reading so fast. It's like, am I reading fast or am I just dedicating a blasphemous amount of time to reading two books? Because I'm sure all of you saying that it took you a few weeks to read these books still put in about the same amount of hours. You just didn't do them all in a couple of days. I think my brain might be melting. Too many dragons, too many betrayals, too many babies born under questionable circumstances. I'm on page 244. About an hour has passed, so I'm slowing down again. Oh no. We just lost all of the stakes. There's some lava, but like we're kind of just putzing again. People are just talking about the history instead of what's happening now. Let's live in the moment together as friends. It was also nice because no one was royal in the beginning, and once you become a queen or whatever, princess, once you have a crown, life gets really boring. Don't get rich. It's a scam. <laughs> I'm officially on page 300, this far into the book. The intrigue is waning. Significantly less invested than I was in the first one to 200 pages, but alas, the book continues as does the challenge. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. My brain has had quite a hefty dose of political, historical, fantastical jargon for one morning slash afternoon. It's already 3 p.m. I've been reading this book all day. We have a little over seven hours left on our timer to finish the next 540 or so pages. So we're still doing okay on time. Our biggest enemy right now, as far as the end of this book is concerned, is just our own brain and trying to get ourselves to care. I'm so bummed. I was so excited in the beginning and it's starting to feel like Priori again. I don't know how compatible I am with Samantha Shannon's writing style. The pacing is all over the place. It goes from decently paced, a good balance between information and dialogue to just all of this information like a textbook in your brain. We're still holding out hope. I'm gonna take my break now. Check in later. It's five o'clock. I've been up since 3.30. Day five. Last night I got a little more reading done. It's been a really weird health week. I did take some good old American imported NyQuil. So the vlogging was a little all over the place to say the least. Oh no, the worms be worming. Oh no. <laughs> not, not good. Oh no, 
the worms be worming? <laughs> they are! <laughs> I guess so. Look at that big guy. That's what's happening! He's worming. The connection that Glorian has with her dad really do be hitting. I predict a sick-ass reunion in our future. Someone died that isn't dead. That's what I predict. Watch it happen. But last night, I officially made it to part two. We are exactly halfway through A Day of Fall Night by Samantha Shannon. And we have five hours and 46 minutes left of this challenge. Are you excited? I would be if I got more than five hours of sleep. <laughs> a death happened, and I actually had a slight emotional reaction to it. So that's something. Let's just get reading done, because what else are we supposed to do? It's dark. It's five in the morning. Let's do this. Like, life is short, but also, like, terribly and insufferably long at the same time. <laughs> Hello, my friend. We are down to the last four hours of this challenge. Four hours. What? How have we read for 20 hours? Maybe because this is all we've been doing all week. <laughs> we are on page 552. I still kind of have mid feelings, but I'm still happy to be here because I feel like everyone and their mother has read this series and I'm happy to be in the know and I'm happy to experience this. But you always say I want to experience things, but I don't think you actually want to experience things because you would experience it if you wanted to experience things. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's fun to participate. Okay, let's plow through. This is all that's left. Ah! It was a taste of betrayal. It wasn't a taste of betrayal. It was the taste of betrayal. No, it really wasn't. It was the taste of betrayal. You fucking whore. Oh my god, there's like three hours left. A little over 200 pages left. I just don't think I'm a fantasy girly. I just don't have what it takes. I really wanted to love this series with y'all. I really did, and I'm trying my best. I'm taking notes, and I have my little tabs to keep track of everything, but I just don't care. I'm not close enough to the characters to care about the politics or the action. I want to care so bad. I'm putting the time in. Ugh. There's one character I care about. Mm -mm. One and a half, because one of them is connected to the other one. But like, this is the same in the sense that it's like, oh, a dragon is gonna awaken, the dragons are awakening, oh no, prepare the people, let's form an alliance. And also there's a plague that's gonna pop up sometimes, but for the most part, we're gonna forget about it. So then why is it this long, you know? Why are these books this long? <sighs> I'm sorry this video isn't going as successfully as I hoped it would, but I'm struggling. And I'm gonna be honest about that because I have no reason to lie to you. <laughs> let's finish this. There are exactly 100 pages left with an hour and 17 minutes remaining. Will she make it? It's not you, it's me. I'm sorry everybody, I didn't really love nor connect with either of these books. And I think it's for a very simple reason. Samantha Shannon and I are just not compatible as reader and author, and that's fine. But as I love to preach on this channel and that we're gonna continue to preach about in this outro, subjective experiences for books are not the end all be all as far as book value is concerned. Because sure, yeah, if someone said, hey, did you like The Prayer of the Orange Tree? I would say, no, not really. But I was in a lot of pain this week. As you saw, I was bedridden for most of it. And I think my experience with these books was a perfect distraction. Even though I may have walked away ultimately underwhelmed, it was a fine enough way to spend my time. It was a good way to connect with the community. And before you comment, why did you read it like that? You're meant to savor it and read it slower. It took me a month to read this book. You should read this book how I read this book. One, I just spent a lot of time taking my time in a shorter amount of days. Two, I knew that I was either gonna love these books so much that I would need to know what happens and I would need to read them quickly like that, or I would struggle like I did and need a challenge to push me through to see it to the end. And so this method worked for me perfectly. 
personally. Read however you like, read as much or as little as you'd like to read each day, read as fast or as slow as you'd like to read. Just don't tell others how to read because you are not them. Gatekeeping reading specifically how other people choose to do so sure is silly. So don't be that guy. Also, also do not worry. I am not giving up on the fantasy genre as a whole. I'm putting these down. I'm getting carpal tunnel. I have this trilogy by N.K. Jemisin on my TBR. I also really want to read that trilogy by Sabah Tahir because I loved her other books. So the journey continues. <laughs> so please remember, just because I didn't like reading these two books, it doesn't mean that I don't like you. If anything, I think that that makes you very cool and that I want to be you. At the end of the day, I just wanted so much more from many aspects of these books and so much less from others. For example, personal moments with the characters, between the characters. I needed so much more from that. We get a good sprinkling of that with Eid and Sabrin in the first book, as well as with Glorian and her father in the second one. But for the most part, it just didn't fit the bill for me. It wasn't enough. It left the characters feeling way too flat. And if the characters are flat, I simply cannot be invested in the drama, action, or politics, which was the majority of the books. And if I'm not invested, I'm not going to be able to keep up with what's happening. My biggest deal breaker with this experience overall was how often Shannon would fall into telling us things instead of showing us things. It did improve a little bit with the prequel, especially in the beginning, but we still fell into that habit throughout. On one hand, I can understand this world is ginormous and if we had a moment for everything, it would be eight times as long. But on the other hand, it just felt so unbalanced and made it a difficult experience overall for me. The first 200 pages of Priori were literal torture for me in my opinion, but then the rest of it got a little bit easier, got a little bit better. But it was the complete opposite for A Day of Fall and Night. And I think the reason for this is that in my opinion, these were the same exact book. The beats, the twists, what the characters needed to do, the conflict, it was all the exact same, basically. On the plus side, however, they boost the idea of defying a fate that may have been set out for you by tradition and the importance of making your own path, how breaking the rules can be for the betterment of everyone. And despite the world literally being ablaze, there are pockets of peace throughout, there's love, there's loyalty, and I love seeing that in the book. In case you were wondering, my favorite character in Priori was Eid or the Weasel, TM, and my favorite character in A Day of Fallen Night was Wolf. So I can see why y'all love it. I didn't, but I can see why others do. And as you might have seen throughout the vlog, there were parts that really shocked me or really got me going, they got me excited. But I think that those moments felt bigger than they actually were because the rest of the reading experience was such a slog that when something would happen, I would get so excited thinking that we were going in a different direction, but then we would fall right back into homework territory. I thought that the storylines in both from how many characters there are, how deep the history is, how big the map is, etc., all of those things. On one hand, Shannon, holy smokes, you have all that in your brain, you thought of that, that's wonderfully impressive. But on the other hand, it really really just watered down the experience as a whole for me. My brain simply could not keep up with what was important and what was fluff. And yes, that fluff was well thought out. It was careful fluff, but in my opinion, it was fluff nonetheless. So while I could tell that this was a very carefully, intricately weaved web, I was consistently reminded that I am not a spider, but a bug desperately trying to detangle my wings. However, there is a good chance that you watching this video are in fact a spider. So if you're a big fantasy person, you could really dig these books. Obviously, so many people have. I don't share my dislike for things in order to get you to dislike them as well. I just make silly little vlogs on the internet. You do not have to have the same feelings as me and the odds of you having the same feelings as me is very small because we're all different. <laughs> the only thing that I can actually disagree with online are the people who say that even if you don't really like fantasy that you will love these books and you don't need to have a fantasy brain to wrap your head around them. I disagree with that. I've read quite a few fantasies and I struggled with these a lot. And so if you're not a big fantasy person and you want to dip your toes in the genre, this is certainly not the place to start start, in my opinion. But even though I didn't like either of these books all that much, I'm still happy to have read them for the community aspect of it. It's like when you go to the movies with a group of friends, and maybe you didn't like the movie, but you still watched it with friends, and then afterwards you're a part of the conversation, you can hear why other people love it, and that's exciting. It's good to be included. It's good to be a part of something. And so I don't regret it for that reason. And so speaking of continuing the conversation, I would like to recommend a few other videos if you would like to continue your Samantha Shannon, Priori of the Orange Tree viewing experience extravaganza. First up, we have Joel, who has two reading vlogs, actually one for each book, and he's so passionate and excited to read them. So if you love these books as well and want to cleanse your palate after watching this video, head on over there. What I also love about Joel's vlogs is how concise he is in navigating the plots of books. I personally didn't know how much to share without spoiling, but he somehow does it so perfectly. I also really liked R.C. Rodriguez's review. I mean, look at those shelves. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to fantasy. This review was critical and analytical, but overall he still enjoyed them. So significantly more eloquent than my sickly self attempting to grasp these books. I also loved Ashley's review because she's so respectful and patient and loving, but she also had similar feelings to mine and watching her video gave me some confidence to even upload this video because I was terrified of y'all. 
I still am actually <laughs> and if you would like to respectfully tell me why you love these books I truly would love to hear it you are more than welcome to continue the conversation in the comments down below I absolutely love to hear why people love the things that they love like I said we're all a piece to this wonderful puzzle of life so feel free to include your piece down below if you'd like and also if you agreed with me that perhaps these are a little overhyped and you struggle to connect and follow them just know that you're not alone and that of course as long as you stay kind you can also join the discussion remember that this isn't an issue of ooh, can we trust book Tuber's opinions, or mm, you just didn't like this book because you did X, Y, and Z wrong, or you just like this book because of X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. It's not really the book's fault. It's not really my fault. It's not really anyone's fault. You're allowed to just not like books sometimes. It's that simple, and it's not that serious. Everyone is welcome. Be nice to me and to each other. Thank you to everyone on Patreon.com who make it possible for me to upload as frequently as I do. Y'all are the bones and bread of this operation. It is thanks to y'all that while I was suffering in bed, I was able to say, I am hard at work plowing through these books. So, endlessly grateful for y'all. If you would like to join the book club, be a part of our Discord where we talk about all kinds of things, get some funky fresh downloadables, that will be linked in the description. And as always, thank you for clicking, thank you for caring, and thank you for being nice. Emphasis on the nice. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!